Hello and welcome to Kinboshi Sumo and Kinboshi Radio, our uh, program. It is the first of the month, the first Friday of the month, so we're trying to get these to you consistently. And this one is super exciting because we are going to break down the Basho that was and maybe make some uh, Bonske predictions as well. But Nick, how are you feeling? I feel great. That's two winners in a row we predicted. Geniuses. Absolute geniuses. From the beginning, too. Oh, oh yeah. Before I mean, it even started. Listen, we just we just know what's happening. Uh, obviously, it's it's not like... Uh, I mean, listen, it takes a lot of courage to pick the only Ozeki in a Yokozuna-less field. <laughs> Nobody could have seen that coming. Nobody. I think we were the only people who thought he was going to win this thing. <laughs> but There was a brief period where actually... It looked a little sketchy, though. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, we talked about it in our sort of hype show for the close of the Ba show, but he his record was dominant going in when he was at 9-1, and one, etc. Uh, and he did end up only winning the thing on a 12-3 and three record. So, for a second, basically, the field caught him, and Onosho looked like the favorite before he ultimately collapsed, which is not... I mean, that's a familiar thing to see from a Maegashira rank and filer in the end. So I still give all credit to Onosho for an incredibly impressive performance. And I hope that he can turn this into a run. But uh, a major topic for us had been, will Takakesho get the 14-1 and needed to probably make a Yokozuna bid immediately? That did not happen, but he did get the win. So I am a little curious... Generally speaking, if someone wins back-to-back tournaments and gets that 36-37 wins, they will get a Yokozuna promotion. So now he has one tournament win instead of just a runner-up. Do you think that he has a legitimate case at Yokozuna? Do you think that it's going to fall apart? What are you thinking about this, Nick? I think I think if he wins the next Basho by a little bit more, not another 12-3, but if he gets that 14-1 or a 13-2 even... Mm-hmm. With the runner-up from November, I think it'd be a solid case for it. Yeah, I mean, I personally think that even at 12, if he has gone three straight tournaments with 12 wins and two of them were Yusho, I don't think there's any way the JSA can deny him Yokozuna at that point. What I am more interested in is, I think this is maybe what you're getting at, but let me know, it's not that impressive of a record per se. It's it's not the dominant run up to Yokozuna that Terra no Fuji had, I guess, is where I'm going with it. Yeah, same exact thing where I know they talked about, you know, if he can do a 15-0, 14-1 win, maybe we bump him up to Yokozuna. And it's kind of like you had pointed out the last time, it's not the greatest run up, but I think if you get a third, a third uh, Bajo in a row with that same similar scoring, I think that's solid. Yeah, I agree, and I think that just the way Sumo is placed, he would have to go up there. But I'm very curious what we think if he gets there. Is he going to be an underpowered Yokozuna? Are we going to continue this era of Maegashira's running and making these pushes for Yusho? Because he's been around here, and they've still been winning. I guess this is good or impressive that he's healthy and in the championship run and he wasn't even healthy i think i saw a report where he said that he injured his neck was it on like day nine but didn't tell anyone and just kept fighting which is really impressive actually because you could tell like a little bit because he did run into those troubles towards the end yeah but he still did phenomenal yeah like at the end of the day you know 12 13 wins is where you're gonna see most you show victories at yokozuna's when they're on form, generally we want to see 13-14 or even the Zen Show U shows, those undefeated 15-0 and 0 wins. But this is, you know, par for the course, and it's it's what an Ozeki should be doing. I, I think both of us would rather see Ozeki's getting 13 wins than 12. And so I guess that's what just continues to give me pause with Takakesho. I think where Sumo is, obviously if he can get that win, he deserves to be up there. He's got a more impressive career than anyone around him or even below him at the moment, I just like, man, it, we, we got spoiled, you know? We we just finished watching Hakuho, the greatest of all time. It, I guess maybe that's the bigger issue. I think what would be really exciting for me to see would be Terno Fuji sits out for March just to really give him that a little bit extra time for training. Now that he, I think he's, you know, he's obviously reasonably recovered, keep mm-hmm. training. Takakesha win March, and then come May, you come back in with two... It, probably too solid Yokozuna at that point. Mm-hmm. And I think things will start to right themselves a bit. You still, you know, you won't 
I don't think you have anybody at Ozeki at that point, but you still have two at that point solid Yokozuna that I think could start to write it where it's like those two are going to be dominating, kind of setting up what everybody should be aspiring to. I'm exactly with you. That's my dream scenario as well. I don't want Terano Fuji to come back right away because I worry what that does. I think that just further shortens the tail on him. Like, are we only going to have the rest of this year with Terano Fuji? Are we going to have this year and next year? I have a hard time imagining that he's still fighting in 2025. Uh, but if he comes back right away from this double arthroscopic knee surgery, I, man, he'd be lucky to get any four. I worry because he's come back too early from injuries before, which is commendable from a standpoint of spirit and fight. We've talked about where we question that sometimes in guys like Shodai, even though they have all the physicals and all the talent to be there. They don't seem to have that fight that Terano Fuji has, but this is the other end of that is I, I don't want to see this guy in March. No, and I, it's hard to know what this will actually end up being. I think the most recent quote I saw was him just saying essentially like, oh, I'll be back once I'm healed. Great. But when you're the Yokozuna, like, does that mean like you're actually waiting or you know, are you going to push it maybe a little bit just because, the, you know, like, I mean, the sport is kind of riding on him a little bit, mm-hmm. but he's still in that safe spot where I think as long as... Takake show he did well enough uh, as long as his injury doesn't continue to bother him I think he's still it's safe to keep Taron Fuji out yeah right and I think that's the big thing for me as well into this next boss show and we'll have a show uh, in early March where we're actually seeing what the landscape looks like and picking our winners there we'll probably have a definitive answer on Taron Fuji at that point as well but I think that if Taron Fuji sits out again it's just Takake shows to lose here I think he has to be the favorite for March if Terano Fuji's not in it. But it's curious, we just talked about, I don't necessarily want to see Terano Fuji back, but I kind of think if he comes back and his trainers think he can come back, I think that is terrible for Taka Show's Yokozuna bid. I, I think I probably pick Terano Fuji to win the Basho at that point, even on bad legs. Like, I still think an injured Terano Fuji comes back and is the best wrestler in this division. The reason I don't want to see him come back is not because he couldn't win a Basho, but because I think it denies us many Bashos that he might have on the back end. What do you think about that? Uh, no, 100% agree. If he comes back, like, there is almost no chance that Taka Keisho gets actually gets that Yokozuna slot. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, looking at his record from when he was around... When it's like, oh no, in July he was injured. He went eleven and four. Yeah, exactly. And and he was he was badly injured there. We we watched it. We were like, this is not this is not Terano Fuji fighting. And still, a seventy percent Terano Fuji racked up eleven wins. Yeah, like injured Terano Fuji hits eleven and twelve wins, which with this crowd is enough is enough to win the tournament. I think so as well. Just where Sumo is right now is we're waiting to find out who comes when the dust settles. Who comes up? is as these young challengers to be the next generation, as guys like Tochinoshin and Takayasu, who were the previous generations Ozeki have dropped away. And even then, let's touch on the Ozeki situation. So even more fallen contenders. We talked about how Takayasu, they probably would have counted his high Maigashira wins as a push for Ozeki. But now, there's no chance. He sat out a tournament, and so basically that's restart the clock from square one. And, of course, he still needs to win a Yusho to get there. We saw Hoshoryu have a fine tournament. I mean, it was good early, but then he suffered that ankle injury. And, again, more power to him with the fight coming back injured. But that scared me because I'm like, don't... Oh, no, I know you need to get the Kachikoshi to keep Sekiwake, but... If you damage the ankle, it's all for nothing. And then Shodai. Uh, Shodai had a chance to bounce right back up. Didn't happen. Okay, so Takayasu, Hoshoryu, and Shodai, I think, are all out of the Ozeki conversation now. No, yeah, I agree. It's I'm glad that Takayasu sat out because yes. that type of injury, aggravating it, is career-ending. Yeah. But it's a bummer because, again, he's going to have to start over. And I think he could... He'll get close again, yeah. I'm sure. Where Over a couple tournaments, he's going to do really well, but Man, those injuries, he's a little older, it's tough. Hoshoryu? Oh my god, I didn't think he was going to get it. I thought he was going to get demoted. Yeah, if... and that would have been the worst. If he comes back on that hurt ankle and still goes down to Komusubi, oh, devastating. Yeah, where he was like, oh, I'm going to fight on, and they lost almost all his matches. The only reason he got it on the last day was because Inosha grabbed his top knot. Yeah! If he had, his hand had been two inches to the right, 
he loses and he loses yeah. that slot. It's so true. It's so true. And then, yeah, so he, we, we both agree. He has put damage on that ankle that didn't need to be on there. Or maybe it did. Because, again, at the end of the day, if the goal is to continue climbing the rankings and become Ozeki, he stands a much better chance of doing that from Sekiwake than he does at Komosubi. Not necessarily. You just need wins in the Sanyaku, but it, it just looks different. It changes the optics. No, I agree. And I... For him specifically, I don't think it would have been the worst if he dropped a Komusubi for a tournament. Mm-hmm. He's good. He's mm-hmm. a solid Sekiwake, and I think he would have bounced back very quickly. But I understand why he doesn't want to even take that risk, because it doesn't always... That gamble doesn't always work out for everybody. Totally, exactly. And then there's obviously the real-world implications of a paycheck. You get paid more as a Sekiwake than a Komusubi, so maybe that's what motivated him. I don't know. But... We do then, if those three are out of the mix, like Kiribayama had a very impressive 11 and 4, but I think if he's making this run, he's very much at the beginning of it. Now, he's been at Komosubi for three straight tournaments, but he had nine wins, then eight wins, and now 11 wins. So, really, I consider this Basho that just happened being step one. I think he really needs to have two good Basho. I don't see him going doing what would be necessary, like 14 and 1 and a U show to kind of nullify that eight and seven in November of 22 to get him to the 33 wins and a title for Ozeki. I think he's at the very start, but I mean, what do you think about Kiribayama making an Ozeki push? And is there anyone else besides him who the math would say is making a run right? I like Kiribayama. He's fairly consistent, but I do think long-term, I kind of look at him more as like an obby where he's very good at like the Komosubi Sekiwaki level. I don't know that he's consistent or necessarily quite at the level of ozeki Mm -hmm. i mean we'll see in the next couple of tournaments to see what he can do he fought he did a fantastic job this time Mm -hmm. but you know he mostly goes eight and seven nine six which is good Mm -hmm. at that level but and it's just like i don't see the dominance from him you know like he lost day one tamawashi bulldozed him which i mean tamawashi is very good we both agree but you know, if you're going to get bowled over by a pusher thruster, it's like he, he lost to Tamawashi, but he did beat Takakesho. Okay. Uh, he beat Mitakeyumi, who's another big body guy, but then he lost to Shodai. Okay. He lost to Daisho. He lost to Tobizaru. I'm not mad about these losses. I just don't think that if you're making an Ozeki campaign, you're supposed to lose to Tobizaru. No, I agree. That's why I think he's really good at where he's at. And I do think I think he'd make a great Sekiwake, Mm -hmm. and we'll see, but I think that's probably around the area where I would expect him to be, like you said, at least for right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I think I'm in the same boat, and then besides him, I I don't know who is going to fill that Ozeki hole, but maybe, you know, this is the talk of the town, at least the English language sumo internet world, but we can talk a little bit about the promoted wrestlers and ask are they going to bring Asano Yama up? Because he was a former Ozeki, and I think the idea is that he'd still have the talent to get back there, although I personally think that the JSA have ended any hopes he ever would have had of becoming a Yokozuna. I, I think that ship has sailed. I hope he proves me wrong. But I also want to say that in this Jurio Basho, he went 14-1. and It was very great. It was dominant. But he did it from J12. And... I I don't know that 14 and 1 in the U show is enough to promote him simply because unfortunately for him guys who were higher ranked in the Bonds K also did very good else not as good as him but Bushozan at 9 and 6 from J1 it's very hard to not send someone up with 9 wins when they were J1 Hokuseho at J2 9 and 6 Technically, that is supposed to send him up. I could see them maybe denying him, but Hokuseho is also one of these young guns like Atama Fuji that I think the JSA wants to push to be that next generation who's supposed to fight for Ozeki. So that's another one that might be ahead of him in the pecking order. Kinbo Zan was very much, until a disastrous final three matches, he lost to Asano Yama, Tsurugisho, and Shona Noumi in the final three days, but otherwise he was 11-1 right there with Asano Yama fighting for the title, and he's another one of these young stars they've been pushing, so 11-4 at J5, he's probably supposed to go up, and then just below him at J6, Dai Shoho, 12-3, again, very hard to deny these guys, they could, but I I don't know that there, I, I feel like there are maybe three three or four slots that are going to be available in Makuuchi. And I don't know, do they make room for all five of those guys? Do they deny someone who is higher ranked than him? Because remember, Ryuden, 
who came up and had an extremely similar situation in terms of he's one of these guys that broke COVID protocols and got one of these draconian punishments that sent him far, far down, and he had to fight to make his way up. Ryudin actually had to fight in Judo for three Bashos and had to get two titles to come up because when he was J13, he went 13 and two and won the championship, his first Basho up. So he was one slot below where Asano Yama came up. Asano Yama J12, Ryudin J13. He went 13 and two and won the title. So he actually had a one win worse record, but they only pushed him up to J3. So if they only pushed him up to J3, I almost feel like Asano Yama's performance, I feel like they're gonna stonewall him at J1. What do you think, Nick? So I think the the difference for that I'm seeing with Asano Yama versus Ryudan is the Ozeki situation specifically, mm-hmm. because you know he's good enough to plow right through. Like Ryudan's doing fantastic. I think Asano Yama would do just as well, if not better, in the Makauchi. Mm-hmm. And I think because it's so unstable right now, I do think that they'll show him that little, they'll show him that, or give him that edge that will push him above to at least show, you know, this is your chance to get up there. Because I, like you said, I think they ruined his chance before when things look different. I don't think they would have given him the same punishment if things were the way they are now. Yeah, I, I think so. I think that they've dug this hole for themselves and maybe don't want to do it again. And 14 one, it's good. Like you said, maybe mathematically not quite as strong a chance, but I think just putting in like the human element of what's going on, I, I think for sure they, they bump him up. Fair enough, yeah. So we'll see. I think I lean towards that J1 area, whereas it sounds like you're leaning more towards that M15, 16, 17. I, I think I'm with you with my heart. I hope that's what happens. I, I don't know. And this might be an opportunity for us to transition and look at what some of our predicted bonds case were. Yes, where we can look at the heartbreak that is Chiyomaru. <sighs> just you, you know it's going to happen every time, but it still just sucks to watch. It's so sad. And so, yeah, when we look at opening up slots, Chiyomaru's definitely gone. 4 and 11 from M16. I, I'm sorry. And... Yep. I think that, well, Okunoumi retired, so that's a definite slot that we're going to get as well. And I think, though, that Tsurugisho did enough to save himself. Obviously, Kotoeko did. I think Mitoryu did enough to save himself. So besides those two, and I think Chiyoshoma barely did enough to save himself. But I I think this is bad news for me and you, because originally I thought when Tochinoshin pulled out of the tournament at 2-2, and I thought... All right, some of these dudes, Tsurugisho, Mitoryu, maybe Azumaru, maybe Ichi Yamamoto, these guys down here, I think they're going to end up saving Tochinoshin because they will do bad enough that they need to go down and they will rescue Tochinoshin at M17 at the very bottom. But now, I think we have two guaranteed open slots, the Chiyomaru and Okinoumi slots, but I, I I think we lose Tochinoshin, right? I Yeah, I think with where he was at, I, I don't see him staying up, unfortunately. Not that he can't like bounce back in, but it's like, oh man, going from just dropping back into like that make sure 16 range, that sucks for yeah. something like that. Yeah, and, and I don't know, will he retire? Will he fight one tournament in Judo and see if he can win the championship and bounce back up? And if he doesn't, then do we see a Kaisei? He just hangs it up? Yeah, I think for somebody at that level, mm-hmm. well, okay, so it's tough. I think somebody at that level, if they not, normally I think they would retire. You know, if you're... If you can't make it in Jurio, like just whatever, with his shoulder now in addition to his knees. But for the fact that you pointed out that he gets uh, deported if he doesn't, yeah, might change the condition. And like, yeah, I, I don't know what the timetables are like on that. I'm sure it's not like an immediate thing, like he needs to have a job. But I do feel like he's made quotes in the past about he has business interests in Georgia, his wife is Georgian, like I think he would go back and... I I, I, so I I believe this is correct, but whereas Kaisei and Aoyama went through the process to get Japanese citizenship, I do think his heart is always in Georgia. I, I don't think he has. I think he's a Georgian. Um, and so that ultimately does matter. He he will not be allowed to stay in Japan indefinitely. Yes, and I think if things had continued the way they were, he may be planned for another like year or two years. So it's like there's a lot of change that I think he has to decide on. Yep, yep. So that's a tough one. And then another one, if if we're going to see a fourth slot, I think it has to be Ichinojo, right? Like uh, originally, 
I thought this punishment from Ichinojo again, I was like, okay, they're gonna they're gonna stopper him at M16, 17, like whatever the very bottom is, and they'll be like, that's punishment enough and keep him here. But with how well a lot of these Jurio guys did, and the fact that most of the low rankers in Makauchi saved themselves, I, I don't know that they can save Ichinojo. I think he's also dropping down. What do you think? I think that especially with all the controversy that's blown up around him, uh, around his stable master, I think if they keep him, it's a bad look. Yeah. Like you said, a lot of these guys didn't do well in Makauchi, like the bottom, but they didn't do bad enough to get dropped enough, I think, to save him. I hear you. And so I think, and the, the point you bring up about it being a bad look, that has to matter. Like if they save him, when there were basically these conversations where they just covered up violations from him that didn't send him down when they absolutely obliterated Asano Yama's career, Yuden's career, things like that. I don't think they can do that. Uh, that's If they have the cojones to do that, uh, I simultaneously like gain some respect for their brazenness and lose respect for them as any kind of legislative body. Oh, 100%. Even the fact that it was just a one tournament suspension for everything that's gone on, which it wasn't necessarily... You know, it's not like he made the choice to be like, no, I just ignore these things. Yeah. So it still punishes him. But yeah, I don't think it'll... Like you said, I think it'll they'll lose a lot if they keep him. Yeah, I think so as well. So with that said, then, I think the names that I shouted out before, for me, I think it's Daishoho, Bushozan, Hukuseho, and Kinbozan who get the nod, and they freeze Asano Yama at J1. But for you, I know that you've got Asano Yama probably coming up instead, and then you've got Daishoho, Bushozan, and Kinbozan, but not Hokuseiho. And again, for the record, if they do decide to push Asano Yama up, I do kind of feel like it is probably Hokuseiho who gets the short stick. But what do you think about that? Just sort of this mix of these contenders, especially when a lot of these young guys, not Bushoho, Busho, uh, Bushozan or Daishoho, but Kinbozan and Hokuseiho are both two of these young guns this generation, along with Atami Fuji, who I think the JSA expect to be their next generation of uh, Ozekis. We both talked about last time what that looked like for Atami Fuji, unfortunately, but what do you think here about that mix maybe of those three? No, I agree. I think they're they're really solid, and I think the reason they're willing to swap, my reason, whether they're willing to swap in Asunyama, because the other person's go- he's going to get there in like another tournament. Like mm-hmm. He's clearly good enough to mm-hmm. do it, mm-hmm. but you're just like, let's just get this in one closer just to get Asunyama back on his back on his run. Right, because the dude's old. He's in his 30s. He's got to make the run now. We we already have talked about we don't really want more Ozeki's in their 30s because of what we're seeing with Terra no Fuji. Um but yeah, or uh, Ozeki's or I was thinking Yokozuna's I guess, but Ozeki's too. Just that old they're looking for the next generation, I think. So, we'll see what happens with those guys. Obviously, as you mentioned, Hokuseiho, it's not the end of his career if he doesn't make it up now. And if he if he freezes at J1, it's a lot easier to get promoted from J1. Basically, just need a Kachikoshi. Sometimes you need that nine in, but it should still be something that is more of a foregone conclusion. And before we leave here, just talking about some of the performances that were impressive. We're talking about potential Ozeki bids, but just in general, Onosho and Kotoshoho. What do you think the future holds for these guys? Onosho, it kind of slipped away at the end, and we talked about how really he won that final match, but lost it on a technicality that he should have lost it on. He did pull that top knot. But what do you think yep. about Onosho and Kotoshoho moving forward? Um, I think Onosho, uh, he's definitely, I, I'll see him maybe going up another couple. It's a wildly different game going from like, obviously like that bottom range up to, you know, Megashira like four to five ish for both of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, but God, their runs were good. Like yeah. that was so cool to see even Kotoshoho going to the, on the last day. Yeah. That's so wild. And Koto Shoheho had good wins, because I, I totally agree with you. When you're in those lower ranks, you generally don't have to fight the high rankers, but we've talked about how the Sanyaku doesn't mean right now what it has in the past. And again, Koto Shoho beat Abi, he beat Daesho, and those two guys were late in the tournament too, when everything was on the line. So that kind of, to me, is more impressive, you know, to beat those guys when there's important stuff happening. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I think they deserve to be in that 4-5 to five range, personally, and... I think they could pull it off again. Maybe not quite as high, but they'll they'll bump up for sure. Yeah, but we don't think that either Onosho or Koto Shoho are in the conversation for this Ozeki thing because Koto Shoho, uh, I believe, is the young... No, Oho is right now, but he's the second youngest guy in the division, I believe. 
And when he was promoted the first time, like we kind of forget about this because Koto Shoho did have a bad knee injury that it still looks like he's never recovered from. But when he first came up from Jurio, he was sort of this young gun. He went 12 and three in March of 2020 and won Jurio and came up and then proceeded to make it all the way up to Maegashira three in a span of just, it was his fourth tournament. He was up at Maegashira three but then had an injury in March of 2021, went down, took him a long time to get healthy and then battle back, but he did. And now it's kind of been a slow burn, but maybe this is a breakout for him. The dude is really young. He's only, he's 23 right now. He'll turn 24 by the end of the year. So like, he's actually in that age range. I just, he really hasn't been impressive in Makuchi until this tournament. Yeah, that's why like, I wouldn't put a whole lot on him mm-hmm. like i don't think it's not like oh yeah for sure he's gonna be sekawake in like two tournaments like but i think he did well i mean he he did fight a lot he's gonna fight a lot of the same people again and he he beat him up or i think he can do it again yeah i think so too i'm excited to see it and then onosho i just i don't know i feel like we know what onosho is more now he's 26 will be 27 by the end of the season and I don't know. We we joked about it a little bit, but he has that run, the 10 and 5, 5 and 10. 10 and 5, 5 and 10. Like, I love him as a villain and as a spoiler. I'd love to see him get up to... I, I mean, I think he'd be a great Sekiwake if he could ever maintain the impressive records he has on his 10 and 5 days instead of his 5 and 10 days. Yeah, I mean, like you said, I love watching him. He blasts people out of the ring, and as they're falling out, they've even hit the ground. He's already turned around walking away. It's so good. It's so good. I love it as well. Um, so other than that, any closing thoughts that sort of defined January for you or things that you're excited when we come back for our March preview show, things that you're looking for in this brief off-season stint? Uh, I am still ride or die Nishka Fuji, and yeah. I'm just going to call that last one a fluke. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. I, it's gonna be I, I have no idea what happened because he fought all the same people, but just couldn't get it together. It's a fluke thing. He's still my boy. And he's about to drop. I think he'll be in a much lower range, maybe even as low as Maegashira 10-11. And I think he should clean up against those guys. For sure. Like his first two tournaments destroyed those guys going 10 and 5 both times. I think he hits another maybe 10 and 5 gets back up there. And then we'll see if maybe that 3-4 range. Like I said, it's weird. He he did well. He did, I think, 9 and 6 at Maegashira 5. So I don't know why Maegashira 4 blew up on him, but it happens. Agreed. I'm excited for it. It should be very interesting. Uh, Our two little young gun boys that we've kind of been following, Nishiki Fuji and Hiradomi, I think will both be at that M10-11 range for the next Basho. So we can see if both of them are going to get a head start over maybe some of the more publicized guys who've definitely taken longer to get out of Juryo, like Kinbozan, Hokuseiho, as this next wave. (laughs) Atami Fuji, who did, I mean, again, I'm not trying to rag on the guy. Came up at 19, like super impressive, but uh, yeah, yeah, that was a rough Basho. (laughs) That was not the star that you want to see. No, Andy had to pull out of January injured. So we'll see. Either way, very exciting. Congratulations to Takake Show. We both think that if Terano Fuji doesn't come back, he's probably, it's all the pressure on his shoulders because it's time for Yokozuna. This is going to be the best chance he has because once Terano Fuji comes back healthy, oi, oi, oi. So I'm excited for this next one. It was a great Basho that we just saw. You and I are geniuses, obviously taking the big risks, risks picking uh, Ozeki's for you show. But yeah, other than that, thanks for listening, everybody. And we can't wait to talk to you again in March. 